Hey guys, and welcome to my tutorial on how to create a photorealistic underwater scene in Unreal Engine 5. In this video, I'm going to take you through the entire process of creating a stunning underwater environment from start to finish using an amazing plugin. Whether you're a beginner or an experienced Unreal Engine user, this tutorial will show you the techniques you need to know to create a truly mesmerizing underwater scene. I'll show you how to create a believable underwater environment with detailed lighting all in one click. And we can customize this completely to our own needs. I'm going to be customizing it to match the look showcasing Avatar, The Way of Water, as you may have seen in my previous video, which was a teaser to this one, and I'll leave a link to that on screen now. So sit back, relax, and get ready to dive into the world of Unreal Engine 5 and learn how to create a photorealistic underwater scene that will blow your audience away. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss a video from me in the future. So without further ado, let's get started. So what we want to do first is we obviously want to get this plugin for Unreal Engine 5. Now this is actually on Gumroad instead of the Unreal Marketplace, but don't worry, Gumroad is also a very trusted website if you don't know of it already. It's great and this is perfect for us as well. I think the reason it's on Gumroad instead of the Marketplace is the Marketplace sometimes say it's, it's not detailed enough, it's not complex enough. And that might be why, or for their own different reasons, I don't know, but we're going to get it from here. So you'll find a link to this in the description down below. Now you notice it says name a fair price and this is in Canadian dollars for 100 plus. That doesn't mean you have to spend 100 plus dollars. You can see here it's zero plus. So you can pay any price you want for this or you can pay zero if you want it as well. Since I've already got it, I'm just gonna put in zero and say I want this. And then what should happen is in here, you just enter in your email address and it will then be emailed over to you. So you just put in your email address like so and then simply press get. Once you've done this, you should see that you then just immediately have a download here. So what I'm going to do is just download this wherever we want. So I'm just going to put it into my Unreal Projects folder, bpunderwater.ra, and I'm going to save that like so. Once this is downloaded, I'll get back to you. So here we are, this is now downloaded. So what we're going to do is open this up in our documents. We're going to right click on it and then simply just WinRAR extract files like so, and then we'll press OK. This is then going to extract it and obviously you do need to have WinRAR installed, which I imagine you probably do, but if you don't, I'll leave a link to that in the description down below as well. But once this is fully extracted, what we're gonna do is open this up, so you see we now have just a folder called BP Underwater, and then simply open the project like this. So we're gonna double click the .u project file. And then once it opens up, you'll see something like this. So it's just an empty project, that's fine, we're not gonna be using this project. Now you can, if you want, you can just build your game inside this project instead, if that's what you wanted, but I imagine you've already got one set up and you want to do it in your own one instead. So what we're gonna to do to be able to get this content into our game is we're simply gonna open our content browser. So we can go to control space, and then we're gonna select all of these different folders like so. So you can select the first one, hold shift, select the last one, right click on one of them, go to migrate, which is here, press migrate, and then it's gonna select everything we want. We do just want all of these. So we want everything inside of this project, like so. So you can see we have all of these selected. Press OK, and it's gonna choose where you want to migrate it to. We want to migrate this to our project. Now it's worth mentioning, this is a 5.0 project, and you have to migrate to a 5.0 project as well. Unfortunately, you can't go up or down project files. So what we're gonna do is find where we want it to go. So I'm gonna go back to my Unreal Projects folder, avatar tutorial and go into the content folder. When migrating, you have to go into the content folder, you can't go anywhere else. So we'll select this folder and you'll see some assets don't have a corresponding content route in the destination Niagara. So then we'll just press yes. This will allow us to create our own folder for all of these in here. It may take a second to load as we're moving quite a bit of stuff, it's about three gigabytes. So it may take a minute, but this will soon prompt us to create a folder and it will put everything from this project into our project into that folder nicely for us. So here we are, folder for migrated assets. I'm not gonna call it migrated. I'm gonna call it underwater environment. That makes no sense for me. You can name it whatever you want. But underwater environment's fine. And I'm gonna press okay. Make sure you don't already have a folder with the name you're creating here. I know for sure I don't, so I'm gonna do that. And again, we'll just wait a little minute. And you should see it now says copied 390 files. It says some content could not be copied, some files were copied successfully. However, whenever I get that, it typically always does it anyway. And it said that last time I did this, and I still managed to get everything over perfectly fine anyway, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. Now that took longer than I expected it to to actually migrate over, probably just because I'm recording, 
but we've now got it migrated over. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up that new project we've got. So let me go over here to Avatar Tutorial. Once we're in here, if we press Control Space to open the content browser, you should see we now have a new folder called Underwater Environment. And we can open this up and now it's not organized at all, it's just kind of shoved everything into this folder, but you can see we now have everything in here. Now this doesn't bother me too much as I'm only really going to be using one thing in here and that is the BP Underwater. This is what we're going to be using to create our underwater environment. And if you remember in the intro, I said it's one click. I wasn't exaggerating. We can drag this in here and we've now got an underwater environment. As you can perfectly see here, we're now definitely underwater. However, I also said we're going to be customizing this because I think we can make this look a lot better. So one way I'm going to make it look a lot better is doing it in a different level. So I'm going to open up the BP underwater 2 level we have here. And while this is loading, I'm also going to put on screen now a before and after picture of this blueprint of what we have when we just drag it in and then what we have after we're going to be doing the customizations which I've come up with, which I'm going to be showing you today. So here we are in the level. Now it's pitch black, we can't see anything. But as soon as I drag in BP underwater, you'll notice we now have it all lit up and it looks a lot better. Now this might look very different to what we had before, don't worry about that, it is the exact same, it's just because we've got loads of other stuff in here that makes it look more underwater, because we're actually in an underwater scene, in an underwater environment. But everything else with the blueprint is the exact same, I've just dragged it in. So, what we're going to be doing to customise this to make it look like Avatar is something very, very simple. What we're going to do first is find the blueprint and select it so we can change all the settings down here. I'm just going to be going from top to bottom, covering all these. So the cube map you can obviously change if you want it, but we're not going to bother too much with that and the HDR intensity and all that great stuff, as well as the color and all that stuff there. But again, I'm not going to bother with that. We can also change the sunlight transform so we can move where the sun is going to be, where it's going to be rotated, the scale of it, all that stuff. But what I want to do with the sun is I just want to change the color because I want this to be underwater. Now, the sun obviously is still the same color, but going through water, it might look a little bit different. It might have a bit of a blue tint to it. So that's what I want to do. So I'm going to change the sunlight color to be a nice blue color and you can see already what this has done. It makes it look a lot more like it's underwater now. The sun isn't as intense technically because it's not as white, it's now more blue. Now I'm going to be using a color which I found last time while creating this because obviously I made the code before doing the video. And the one which I found to be good was 1192BC. And if we press OK, you'll notice we now have a nice blue color like this. And I'm actually also going to copy that and I'm going to use it again in a moment. The sunlight intensity, I'm going to keep as 40. But again, you can obviously change this. If this is really deep, you can lower it down to be 10, so it's a bit darker. Or if you're really shallow, you can increase it. But I think for me, 40 is going to be a good value. Then I'm also going to change the sunlight bounced color to be this nice blue as well. So this just means where the sun is bouncing, you'll notice we're going to change that to blue as well instead of white. So basically all the sunlight is blue. And again, you can change the intensity of these. So if you want this to be 50, you'll notice it's going to increase the brightness or you can lower it and it'll make it darker. But again, for me, five is going to be just fine. Soft shadow, all this great stuff you can do. I'm not going to go through every single thing. I'm just going through all the basic stuff which I'm changing. And you can obviously go more in depth in this if you wanted in your own time. So now we're going to scroll down until we find the fog controls and I'm going to change some of these. So the fog distance, I'm going to set to 500. And you notice already what that has done. It's made the visibility of the player a lot lower. So this is what it was before, and this is what it is now. I think it just looks more realistic. Top surface scattering and the fog opacity, I'm going to leave the same. And again, the same with the fog colors, I'm leaving them as they are. The volumetric fog, I'm not really going to do anything with. You can obviously tick God Rays if you wanted, if that's the look you wanted to go for. But I think for me, I'm not going to do it. It's obviously God Rays would make it look more realistic, but the kind of the look I'm going for, God Rays looks better without. But again, this isn't just one set thing for you. You can do this however you like. You don't have to do the values I'm doing at all. So now we're going to scroll down until we find the post process. And now, if you've ever made an underwater environment, you'll know the post process is a massively important one. So one thing a lot of people do when making an underwater environment is it looks like this and they can never really tell what's wrong. Why does it not look underwater? I've done everything I think I should, but there's just something missing. That something missing is blur. When you're underwater, you don't see perfectly clear like this. It is a blurred screen. You have blurry vision. So the value I found good is 1.5. 
This is a nice blurred value, it's not too much and it's not too little, it gives that nice underwater effect. So if we go up close to something, you'll notice it's not perfectly clear, it's blurred. This is just normal, which obviously looks terrible, and this is 1.5, which gives us a nice little blur like so. So let's back out a little bit once again. And the tint, I'm going to have a 0.3, as again, that just gives it a nice blue tint. And I believe this tint is based on temperature. As you can see, as the temp value under here, it's 6500 at the moment, but I'm going to set it as 5500. Now, if you've not done a lot with lighting, that might not make sense, but temperature is also a term in lighting. The warmer something is, the more orange, the colder it is, the more blue. So this is how I've got it, the temperature and the tint like this to again give it that nice blue effect. Everything else in here, I'm going to leave the exact same. And finally, you can go down to water surface and particles and change all these if you wanted. But again, I'm not going to bother with that. So that is really all I'm going to change. But again, you'll notice we've made a huge difference to what it looked like before and after. What I could probably do is I could probably just drag this in again so I can get BP underwater. This is what it looked like before we did anything. And this is what it looks like after we did all of our changes. You'll notice it looks so much nicer and more realistic for an underwater scene. So that is going to be it for the main part of this video of how I created this underwater environment and underwater scene for the trailer which I posted the other day. Now you'll also notice in there that was a nice cinematic cutscene and also had a character animated swimming around. I'm not going to be going over that in today's video, however if you did want to see how I did that, you can watch videos on screen now and in the description below for how to make a cinematic cutscene and how to use Mixmo to use animations in Unreal and how to create an animation blueprint based on that. So again, I'm not going to go over that now, but what I will do is just show you a quick preview of what Mixmo is. So this is Mixmo. You can see we have thousands of different characters and animations which we can use for whatever we want. So obviously this doesn't look too great because it's an old man idol for a SWAT character, but we can go onto our characters and change it to anything on here as well. And if we go to the animations and just search for swimming, you'll notice we now have these animations which I was using here. So if we just tick in place, we just now have this swimming character. We have treading water, swimming to edge, all these different animations which are great and perfectly free. Let's get a link in the description down below for how to get this animation from Mixmo into Unreal Engine and then how to make an animation blueprint for your character and all your animations inside of Unreal Engine as well. But I think that'll be it for today's video on how to create a photorealistic underwater environment scene, taking heavy inspiration from the new Avatar The Way of the Water film. And again, I did that little cutscene, that little 16 second short film thing, whatever you want to call it, that I uploaded the other day. So thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, please do make sure to like and subscribe down below as it really does help me in the channel a lot. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.